guys, welcome to another Kemikaze creation video. Uh, the time has come. Uh, I've been down to the engine builder recently and uh, finally my block is uh, starting to progress. It's been down there for whew, 12 or 18 months. I suppose COVID hasn't helped and he's had a lot of work on and I haven't pushed him. Uh, but uh, if you've been following this car build, uh, the Tirana, the supercharged beast with the Shane Barnett uh, supercharger kit on it. You'll know that I've had a few issues with uh, rattles, uh, funny noises in the motor, haven't been able to get it quite to run right. I've had one or two good runs in it. Uh, and then we went into this weird world and really haven't done much uh, on the old girl for a while. But uh, yeah, being down at the engine machinist the other day, he had it up on a surfacing machine and was decking the block uh, to start to do the final assembly on it. All the parts are down there for it. So all I need to do is really pull this thing apart and take the head down to him because we're going to do a bit of work on the head uh, and make sure everything's honky-dory before we put the thing back together. So here's the go. Here's the process. We're going to start pulling this thing apart today so we can get the... Uh, head off it and I'll be very interested to see what I find on the way through this pull down and uh, a few people have asked me with a post I did the other day about um, what happened to this uh, bottom end and it's still there, it's still working, it still runs, it's just that uh, little tick in the motor I haven't been able to find and this was a stock standard bottom end, new, new, new pistons, new rings, new bearings, all that type of thing but it was a stock standard. And the one I've built is an absolute beast. Uh, and hopefully it all works well together with this uh, Yellow Terra aluminium head and the supercharger. Anyway, here we go, mate. We're gonna pull her apart. Well, she's been a long time since I've pulled this thing apart. Um, but I'm starting to strip it down now. Got a lot of the accessories off, a lot of the pipe work off. I've just released uh, the supercharger and it's just about ready to lift off. Um, then I can drop the extractors off and I have to yet dump the coolant out so I can start releasing the head. All of the, uh, the workbench is starting to fill up over here and I'll uh, sit the supercharger there when I'm, uh, once I lift her off. Well, there's the mighty beast on the bench. That's a fair lift getting that out of the uh, engine bay. Um, but she's off and I'll do a little bit more cleaning up. I'll show you in the engine bay. We're starting to get down to it now. Just got to pull those strackies back, drain the fluid out of the radiator, um, take the thermo housing off, um, undo the lifters, undo the head and then she's ready to take down to the engine builder. We're gonna completely pull this head apart, pull all the valves out, check it all out, check all the valve guides, check all of the angles on the valves, uh, just make sure it's right. And we will be CCing this head um, to bring the compression ratio up, because if you've been watching this uh, engine build, this was originally bought as a 72cc for the forced induction. Uh, but on the 173, um, it really lowered the compression. So we're going to, uh, I've talked to Shane Barnett months and months and months ago about what I was doing and what I was planning with the 202 bottom end. And he suggested we could get up to 9, 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. And I might touch base with him again on that before we go too far ahead. But that's the plan to, uh, we've, we're decking the block down to... Uh, flush with the pistons and we're going to cc the head to uh, bring that compression ratio up and give us a bit more bang for our buck well the head's off and out um haven't found anything super obvious at the moment with this bottom end um the push rods all seem to be straight uh, you know the pistons look okay in there and it was running okay so i didn't suspect the pistons uh, one thing that i do want to have a look at eventually is pulling out the hydraulic lifters checking i haven't got some gunk in one of the hydraulic lifters that was uh, 
stopping it from working properly. But in general, she looks okay. Lots of carbon uh, in the combustion chamber, which I'll show you right now. So here's the combustion chambers and lots and lots of carbon in there. So she's been running incredibly rich, I would think. Um, I'm no expert, but gee, there's some carbon in there. Um, you know, had a fair few shed starts, not a lot of uh, big runs to burn any of that out. But uh, yeah, she's definitely got some carbon in those combustion chambers. So she's all pretty much ready. Uh, I've got to take this head down to uh, my engine builder um, so we can CC it and get it back on and he's gonna pull it all apart and uh, check it all out anyway. Here's all my push rods. They all seem straight and true, reasonably good condition. Uh, and uh, one thing I was uh, happy about, I actually used ARP head bolts in this when I put it together so I can reuse those uh, with the new build. So there she all is, heaps of stuff pulled apart. There's the big beastly supercharger. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with that and I don't expect that there is. I think it's more uh, me getting the engine right, which hopefully this new engine should be absolutely brilliant. Anyway, that's the process for today. One of my areas of concern was the hydraulic lifters. So I've just taken the uh, side covers off the motor and I'm gonna pull those lifters out and uh, check them out. I, I was concerned that a bit of uh, gasket goo, some silicon gasket goo may have got into the oil system uh, and possibly blocked up one of those hydraulic lifters which would account for the um, tappity noise that I had in the top end. Uh, a few people suggested about the high rise uh, rocker cover and I have purchased one of them for the new build. Um, so that will negate that issue as well. So um, it's down to these uh, lifters and then uh, onwards from that, uh, whether I've got any damage on the cam. So I'll pull these lifters out and have a look. So as you can see, all the hydraulic lifters are sitting and lined up uh, there, except for one. Uh, got a little gap there in them. So the third one in um, that was down in this hole had a lot of trouble getting it out. And I'll uh, show you what I found. So here it is. That's that lifter. Had one tap in the motor what's going on with this lifter and that lobe on the cam i do not know but it has worn the hell out of that lifter so whether it's seized at some time or it's uh, lost its uh, uh who knows who knows what's happened to that but i'll i'll investigate that more but at least i've got a uh, an answer to that question and if you guys out, of here, out there have been watching this channel and watching this car build and watching and listening to that tick in the motor for I don't know how long, there it is. That lifter is absolutely knackered. So it's been a long time uh, doing this major sort of mechanical work in the old shed. Um, I shuffled the shed around a little bit. Uh, I might give you a bit of a look at that um, before I sign off. Um, but uh, it's pretty much stripped down. I, got a, I really just want to get that head off is the main thing and get it down to the engine builder. And uh, I'll progress. I think I'll put this uh, up on the hoist and I'll progress with some stuff that I can do at home, pull the rest of that engine out, tidy a whole heap of stuff up in the engine bay uh, that was done on the fly and uh, get ready for this new engine uh, to put it all together hook it all up with the gearbox and uh, start to fit it back in and go back through the process. Anyway, guys, thanks for uh, watching me again and uh, keep in touch. Uh, make suggestions, put some comments on, uh, let me know what you've done uh, and uh, any ideas you might have with this uh, build. But anyway, guys, take care.